Hello, listen, we want to invite you to something that is very pertinent at this time and this day and time. We are excited about having our second annual Successfully Raising Young Black Men's Conference. That's right, our second annual. Last year was great, and this is going to be even greater. We look forward to having you here at the Abyssinian Church, 528 33rd Street, Oakland, California, our second annual Successfully Raising Young Black Men Conference. We have Dr. Harold Bayberry of the First AME Church. We also have Dr. J. Alfred Smith of the Allen Temple Baptist Church. We also have Dr. George Cummings of the Imani Community Church. We also have Ms. Brenda Knight, uh, the founder of the Ladies in Red. And also we have my friend and brother, Pastor Horatio Jones of the Fremont Family Church. Also, you're going to have myself, Dr. Kevin D. Barnes. That's right. So we're looking forward to having a great time. So listen, we're going to empower this community. We're going to do what God has said for us to do in terms of sharing with others how they could raise it. It's a parenting conference. Listen, get on that phone right now and call somebody and tell them, say, all roads lead to Abyssinian Missionary Baptist Church at 528 33rd Street. Tell them that they need to be here. Listen, the conference is only $20. That's right. But you get a book, you get a lunch, and you get all of these great speakers. I want to see you here. That's right. You're getting a personal invitation from me, Pastor K.D. Barnes, that you will be here. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you. That's right. Write it down. August the 4th. That's right. Uh, August the 4th. 2012 right here at the Abyssinian Church. That's right, from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Look forward to seeing you. God bless you is my prayer. See you soon. There are three thoughts that we want you to leave out of here with. Pastor going to preach about. Friends, how are you? This is Pastor right Katie Boyce, and we are delighted that you decided to tune in to us today. Just reading here in 1 Corinthians, chapter number 15, and verse forward and seeing you. See you at 528 33rd Street, Oakland, California, Abyssinia, Missionary Baptist Church. Hear the word, come and see the real message. Amen. This Matthew, he comes to you and I, Tasha, and he says to us, he said, listen, he said, let me tell you something. Do you know what to do when you feel like you're sick? He said, here's what you do. You feel like saying, amen. So the first thing you got to do is that, amen, you got to make sure, somebody ought to talk to me here today, amen, you got to make sure, amen, that you're going in the direction of Christ and not your circumstances. In other words, amen, you can't look, get your eyes off of your circumstances and put your eyes on your Christ. Are y'all still with me? Look at it when it comes in this third. Are y'all still there? Somebody shout hallelujah. Come in. The third verse. And he says, but when he, watch this, but when he, what, saw the wind, both you got that? Let, let, me tell you, let me tell you what was going on. Here it is. Here's the story. Come in, in chapter 4, verse number 19, man. It talks about the fact that, watch this, that uh, Jesus had told the people to set on the ground, amen, and he took five loaves and he took two fish, and, 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 and the Bible said that he blessed it, he broke it, amen, and he passed it out. He gave it to the disciples and passed it out to all of the people that were there, amen. The Bible says that they did eat, and after they ate, he made sure that, watch, they had 12 baskets left over. Are y'all still there with me today? Then he come. And listen, he went to the fellas, amen, he told the disciples, he said, listen, fellas, I want y'all to get in the ship. And after you get in the ship, he said that what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go up and pray while you get in the ship. The Bible says that all of the disciples got in the ship, and as they got in the ship, began to sail. As they got to the midst of the sea, amen, they say that the wind and the wave began to toss. In other words, they met a storm on the middle of the sea. Can I get a witness to that? And the Bible says that, watch this, Jesus, what he did was he began to walk out to them. Amen. Now, and the Bible said that he walked on the water. I wish I had some Bible readers today. He said that he walked on the water. Amen. Now, and as he was walking on the water, the disciples saw him. Uh, and when they saw him, they said, like, wait a minute, is that, what is that, is that a spirit? And Jesus told them, he said, wait a minute, he said, be of good cheer. 
He said that, listen, it is I. I wish I had a witness. And Peter, being the bad dude that he is, somebody ought to talk to me today. How many know that Peter said what's on his mind? He didn't care what nobody said about it. Peter comes out and said, okay, Lord, if that's you, then let me come walk out on the water too. He said, now you say that's you, I hear, but let me walk out on the water also. Can I talk to somebody here today? Jesus just simply tell Peter, he said, what? Come. Come means to motion from one place to another. Amen? Watch this. Now, notice what Jesus, when Jesus told them that he said, he told the disciples, he said, let's go to the other side. He never told them that, watch this, that they wasn't going to run into any trouble on their way there. He didn't tell them that it was going to be smooth sailing over there. Anybody know that, watch this, when Jesus told Peter to come, if Jesus tells you to do something, he's already made a way. So he comes to the tent. So he comes. He starts walking on the water. Watch this. Peter walking on the water. No boat, no nothing. He's just walking on the water. Got out of the boat. Walking on the water. And as he's walking on the water, watch this. The Bible says that, watch this, that he took his eyes off Jesus. And, and would anybody know that whenever you take your eyes off Jesus and put your eyes on your circumstances, all that's going to happen, you're going to sink. Can I get a witness here today? Amen. You see, too many people are putting their eyes on their crisis uh, rather than putting their eyes on Christ. Are y'all still here with me? So he comes to our text today and he says that, listen, if you're going to know what to do, we feel like you're sick. He said, first thing you got to do here is that you got to keep your eyes, you got to take your eyes off your circumstances and put your eyes on your Christ. He said, where's that at, brother? I'll tell it to you right now. He said, but when he saw the wind boisterous, verse 30, y'all see that? Now, watch it. He said, but when he saw the wind boisterous, now watch it. Anybody know that you can't see wind? Go ahead. Go ahead. Amen. What you see is the effects of the wind. You can feel wind, but you can't see wind. Can I get a witness today? But notice in the text, he tells you what kind of wind it was. <laughs> he said it was a boisterous wind. Are y'all here? Somebody shout hallelujah. He said that it was a boisterous wind. Now, watch this. The word boisterous, it means, Sister Toledo, it means that it was a powerful, it was a mighty, it was a forcible, it was a strong wind. Are y'all still here with me? Can I talk to you here for a minute? Anybody here, amen, got some circumstances, uh, and circumstances simply means condition in life that could be good or bad, but most times bad, amen. Anybody in here got some circumstances in your life that seems to be powerful, that seem to be forceful, that seem to be mighty, that seem to be strong? Can I get a witness in the name? And everywhere you look, amen, it seems as though there's a circumstance that's trying to take you out. The wind, a boisterous wind that is blowing in your life. Can I tell you something? I don't care how much your circumstances seem to be so powerful. I don't care how much your, I wish I had a witness, your circumstances seem to be mighty. I don't care how much your circumstances seem to be strong. I know somebody else that's stronger than your circumstances. That's stronger. I wish I had a witness. That's mightier than your circumstances. That's more powerful than your Anybody know somebody that's more powerful than your circumstances? Can I get a witness today? He's more stronger than whatever you're going through. I don't care what it is that you are going through, amen. He's more powerful. But the problem is that too many people are taking their eyes and putting their eyes on poor old me. Look what I'm going through. Nobody cares about my situation. I wish I had a witness to that. Just nah, nah, nah. Look, ain't nobody going 
going through what I'm going through. I'm the only one that don't have no money. I'm the only one that don't have no honey. I'm the only one, hey amen, that, that's going through. Look at me and nobody seen the cat. Well, I want to tell you, hey amen, get your eyes off your circumstances and start looking at your Christ because your Christ said you're more than a conqueror. Your Christ said you can do all things through him. Your Christ said that you are not the tail, but you are the head. Your Christ said all things work together for good for those that love God and are called according to your prayer. Your Christ said that you can make it if you trust him. Trust in the Lord with all our heart and lead that to your own understanding. Problem is you're looking at the wrong person. You're looking at somebody that can't help you. Touch somebody, touch that. This is some good stuff. This is some good stuff. No, touch somebody, touch that. This is some good stuff. This is some good stuff. Second thing he said is that the Can't be afraid of what you're going through. To get to? Yeah. Can I tell you something? You will never get to unless you go through. Moment he kept his eyes, glory his 
baptized in the name of Jesus, the Bible said that he began to sink. He became afraid. Are y'all with me? And that's what I'm saying to somebody here today. You can't be afraid, amen, going through what you're going through, amen, to get to what God has for you, amen. Because let me tell you something. Too many Christians are afraid of challenges in their life. Am I talking to somebody else? No. Challenges are sometimes you have hurdles in your life. Sometimes you have tests in your life. Sometimes you have some trials in your life. Too many Christians are afraid of the challenges. But then there are people that are also afraid of the of changes in life. Changes mean there's some deviation. It means that some things have to, to deviate from what it is. Too many people are afraid when it comes to challenge. I wish I had a witness. And when it becomes the change in their life. But then not only change, many people are afraid when it comes to choices in their life. Choices mean that you've got to get to the point in your life that you're going to make up your mind to take care of what you need to take care of. I don't care what nobody says. You've got to make some choices. And if the Negro is not doing what he's supposed to do, you got to make up your mind that for God I live and for God I die. I'm going to make the right choice. But too many people are afraid of Afraid of challenge. Afraid of change. They're afraid of choice. But I want to tell somebody, listen, are you listening to me? It is when you go out on a limb when you get your blessing. You get your blessing by stepping out on the limb. Look at somebody tell them, say, sometimes you have to step out on a limb. Y'all ain't saying nothing to nobody. Look at somebody tell them, say, sometimes if you're going to get your blessing, you must step out on a limb. You cannot be afraid to step out on the limb. Watch it. The other day, it was uh, pretty warm in Berlin. Hot. It was hot in Berlin. So I decided. I said, Kevin, Kevin, I said, what? I said, Kevin, he said, what? Again. I said, Kevin, don't you want something cool and refreshing? Not something refreshing and cool, but something cool and refreshing. We decided that yes, I wanted something cool and refreshing. So I decided to stop by a place that many of you have to know. I decided to stop by and get me a jumbo juice. I wanted me a jumbo juice. When I went to go get a jumbo juice, when they didn't see how are you? I said, well, give me a jumbo juice. I said, uh, what kind of what? I said, I want one with all the berries in it. I want strawberry, blackberry, whiteberry, any kind of berries put in it. That's what I want, I want, I want, I want to jump to. He said, what side is it? I said, okay, man, I'm going She took some berries, I'm watching her, right? She took some berries, she put it in this container you can see through, and put some ice in it, and on her roof. And the next thing you know, she had, she gave me the large berry. And I said, well, put me two scoops of energy in there, too. She brought me two engines in there also. She brought my, 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 my jumbo juice back. And I like the way they bring stuff back to you because they always, when they give you the straw, they always have the part of the straw paper on top of it. Y'all know what I'm talking about? So, 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 so. But that's not what I'm going to talk to you about. Here it is. I got my jumbo juice. I'm getting ready to walk out. And when I'm getting ready to walk out, there was an inscription on the wall in front as you go out the door. And the scripture says, uh, amen, it says to you, it says, that's with it says, go out on a limb, that's where the fruit is. Y'all gonna catch that in a minute. Y'all gonna catch this after a while. I said the scripture said, 
go out on a limb, that's where the fruit is. Oh, can I talk to somebody right now? That's what you got to do. Go out on a limb, that's where your blessings is. Go out on a limb, that's where your... Look at somebody and tell them that if you want God's blessing, you're going to have to go out on a limb. And the problem is, uh, too many people want the blessing from God, but they don't want to go out on a limb. Touch somebody and tell them, say, that's right, you, baby, you got to go out on a limb. See, look over there, you ain't never saw no fruit grow on the trunk of the tree. It's out on a limb to get it. And God said, I got some stuff for you. You got to go through some stuff to get to it. And sometimes I got to put it way out there on the limb so you can go get it. Is that some good stuff? 35 of Say, is that some good stuff? How does somebody tell you that's some good stuff? Just said, preach, pastor, preach, pastor. You got to always remember to call on Jesus. Send in the text, verse 30. Watch this. He said, verse 30, he says, but when he saw the wind most got served. Okay. After that served, he began to sink. But watch it. Even though Peter was one that, when the Lord said something, he always got something back to say. He was spoken for them. Even though Peter would get on people's nerves, he would take it just like this. Peter had sense enough to know who to call on when he was sick. Because the text said, Peter's sick, and Peter, well, Peter's scared, he said, Peter said, look what he said, Lord, save me! Now that's the first thing I love, i say. Because when he says, Lord, he's talking about ruler of master. And he says, save me. Can I get a witness today? Now I want to tell somebody here right now. Amen. You got to always remember, I don't care what, you're, what to do when you feel like you are sick. Amen. Now, you cannot try to call on everybody else. You can't call on everybody else trying to help you. The person that you've got to call on, you've got to call on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. When you're going through something physically, you got to say, Lord, save me. When you're going through something emotionally, Lord, save me. When you're going through something, I wish I had it with a spiritual, eh? Lord, save me. When you're going through some debt in your life, Lord, save me. Whenever you're going through some hardship, Lord, save me. When you're going through stuff that you don't understand, Lord, save me. I keep calling on the Lord. Look at somebody tell me, you got to keep calling on the Lord. I said, Lord, save me from all of this stuff that I'm going through. Are y'all with me here today? Anybody here, you got some boisterous wind going on in your life, amen? You got stuff, amen? I know you're sitting there acting like ain't nothing going on crazy in your life, but you just like everybody else, some crazy stuff going on in your life too. Somebody shout hallelujah. And that wind and that wave, that strong wind, and it looked like you're about to go down. It looked like you're about to sink, amen. But you got to learn how to call on the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, save me. Because, let me tell you something. When the wind of this life, when the boisterous wind is blowing, amen, and you don't know what to do, one of the things that happens is, is that you can't find a way to get no rest. Yeah. If I talk with somebody here today, you and yourself are two days. <laughs> Because you're worried about the wind, the, the boisterous stuff that's going on. Yeah, I'm talking about sometimes it's hard to get some rest. Yeah. You know, look at somebody tell me sometimes it's hard to get rest. Oh, yeah, and then when you don't get the rest, bags start coming up your eyes. Amen. Yeah. 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 Try to put the roof and stuff on it, but it don't really hide. Amen. Yeah. Just, just, amen. Help me, help me, somebody. Try to put the stuff on your eyes. 
but then you talk to hide. So talk to me if you can. He ain't got no sleep. Can't get no rest. And um, I was uh, I was watching television the other day. I said, uh, I watched television the other day. And sometimes because of different things that are going on, sometimes the ministry and everything else, I find it sometimes a little bit difficult to sleep sometimes. Sometimes, man. I'll get up all night and then I'll go to sleep all day, like an hour or something like that. I'll all night and sleep all day. Sometimes it's difficult. But not only me, some of you find it very difficult to sleep in But anyway, I was looking at the commercial. And when I was looking at the commercial, watch this. I was looking at the commercial, I'm talking to the, the, the guy said, on, on the commercial, he said, now listen, he said that the problem is, is your mattress. <laughs> Are y'all still in? He said that, he said that the problem is, is your mattress. He said that what you got to do is, you got to get one of those fancy mattresses. Amen. Uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, a stingray. Uh, 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 a stinger. A stinger. Amen. A foster. Mattress. Sir, sir, that's the, that's the word, baby. Okay, so you got one? Okay, all right. Well, I can't help you on that one. But anyway, I ain't buying no mattress. I ain't buying buy no mattress. Well, anyway, it was a sturgeon foster. And none of them said, no, no, you ought to get you a, a silly pasta pig. And none of them said, no, that's not going to do it. He said, you ought to get the other one at the top of the line. It's called, watch this, a pig and an That's right, we'll check out. Yeah. And then the other one said, no, you need to get you a serve. A serve, number one, comfort mattress. Are you all with me today? But anybody know? That doesn't matter what kind of mattress you have. And, and then on the commercial, watch this. The shot, they saw that saying. And it said, sleep train, you're taking to a <laughs> Let's say it one more time. Sleep train. Don't you believe everything you hear? Because with Jesus, you can have a bumpy mattress. Yeah, with Jesus, you can lay on the floor. With Jesus, you can have a house full of people and just lay your tail down and go to sleep. Because anybody know that every now and then, he'll rock you. Uh -huh. Why don't you just put your arms around somebody? Put your arms around somebody and say, neighbor, just like I'm rocking you. Come on, tell them, just like I'm rocking you. Just like I'm holding on to you. Can I get a witness here? Just like I'm rocking you. Can I get a witness here? That's the way the Lord will rock you to sleep. Sometimes, I know what you're saying. I can't get no rest. But when you get in Jesus, <laughs> some of y'all too worried about stuff. Worried about what you don't have. Worried about what you can't have. Where about, I wish I had a witness in there. You better learn how to let that go and just say, Jesus, save me. Because after, watch what happened in verse 31. And I'm telling somebody what to do 
when you're almost sinking. Let Jesus catch you. Let Jesus catch you. Can I get a witness here? Let him rock you and let him catch you. Excuse me. Uh I don't feel like this all the time, but I feel good. My name is not James Brown, but I feel good. Anybody else here feel? Then the text says, he tell Peter, he didn't tell people you didn't have no faith. But he said, Peter, in the 31st verse, after he caught him, he said, Peter, oh thou, did it, oh thou, of little faith. In other words, Jesus was saying, boy, where's your faith? And I'm talking to somebody here today, where is your faith? Where is your faith? Wow, what a time that was, I tell you. Listen, friends, I want to share something with you. And that is, is that, listen, we want you to become a partner of the Abyssinian Baptist Church. That's right, to become a partner of the Abyssinian Baptist Church. That's right, for only $10 a month, you can be a partner. Now, what does that include? Well, let me share with you what you will receive. You'll receive one of the CDs that's preached by yours truly. Every month in the mail, we'll send it to you. And we want you to just become a partner with us in this endeavor to reach souls for the Lord Jesus Christ. Please send in your cards and your letters to 528 33rd Street, Oakland, California, 94609. And may God bless you. And remember, if you don't have a church home, Abyssinian is the place you ought to be. God bless you.